In this short video, I want to issue a warning about pension scammers, pension sharks, if you like. Watch out for the fact that the pension rules have just changed and they've changed big time, and there are people out there who will happily part you from your hard-earned pensions capital. So, what am I talking about? Well, basically, the rules around the way you can use defined benefit or money purchase pensions have changed quite substantially. Now, just to recap, a defined contribution money purchase pension scheme is not the one that teachers, for example, enjoy. They work for the state. It's not the one that a few companies still offer to their staff based on their final or average salary. It's not that one. Nice work if you can get it. It is this one. It's the one where you put contributions in and the person putting them in can be either an employee or an employer. They go into a fund, that builds up as you work for that employer, and at the end, you get an unknown benefit out. Literally, you don't know what your money will buy until you get to the point where you need to retire, let's say age 55 or slightly older. So all the risk, hence the not quite so smiley face, sits with the employee in terms of the value of the pot coming out of this defined contribution money purchase plan. And that pot is simply the summary of the contributions that have gone in plus tax relief. Don't forget there is tax relief from the government on the way in. The investment growth that's been achieved over the time the pot's invested minus any charges. So hence the question mark, that could be worth anything. No risk for the employer, they just keep shoveling in the three or four or five percent, whatever it is, of your income while you're an employee. All the risks, it's over there. As if that wasn't bad enough, there are now other risks lurking around because a new pensions regime has come in, introduced by Chancellor George Osborne. In theory, it gives you lots more flexibility and freedom. I'm not going to argue with that, but it also opens the floodgates to people who are quite happy to take your money and put it somewhere it probably shouldn't be. So, quick reminder, now I've done more detail on this in other videos, so please take a look at those. In summary, the choices you now have, which you didn't have before, age 55 plus, that age could move in the future, but it's 55 plus at the moment, are take out the whole of your pension as cash. And here's the first warning, you know, don't forget, you only get, whatever you do, the first 25% tax-free. So if you've got a pot, say £100,000, the first £25,000, you can take that, it's tax-free. The rest is taxed as income. And people sometimes forget that, and it's much more it's taxed at your highest marginal rate. And if you take it all out at once, it'll be in that year. So be careful. Another choice, take smaller lump sums, sort of at your own discretion. But again, the first 25% will be tax-free. So if you've got a £100,000 pot, you start drawing out £10,000 a year, let's say, and the first 2500 is tax-free, the remaining 7500 is still taxed at your marginal income tax rate. And that's something that the sharks won't necessarily remind you of. Or take the first 25% tax-free, this is a kind of summary of your choices, the rest buys you an income, and that can be in the form of an annuity or income drawdown. And again, be careful, because a lot of the less scrupulous advisors out there might say, um, yeah, this is much more flexible now. That's the one you want. Draw it off when you like, how much you like, but don't forget a couple of things. Number one, that means you are involved directly in the management of your subsequent portfolio, investment returns, there's risk there. All right, and number two, what you draw off beyond that first 25% tax-free will be taxed at your highest marginal income tax rate. And meanwhile, the press has dealt a fairly hefty blow to the poor old annuity. Yes, annuity rates are not fabulous, but at the end of this presentation, I want to remind you that for some people, they are not actually that bad an option. Okay, so danger lies ahead. Where does it lie? Why? Chief Executive of the Pensions Regulator has said, in a nutshell, Scammers will try to flat attempt and pressure people into transferring pension funds into investments with guaranteed returns, most of which will be bogus. So what I'm focusing on now is you get a phone call or a text saying, hey, pensions freedom, you know, and you might get one of the following lines thrown at you. Watch out for them. Don't be fooled. Get a free pension review. Now, you definitely do want to take advice. The government have said it's pretty much you have to take advice on what to do next, you're about to retire. Be very, very, very careful, people offering a kind of quick and dirty, unregulated pensions review to get you into their schemes. What they're gonna try and do is take the money off you, so you to take as much out as you possibly can up front, and then put it somewhere that you'll probably regret putting it. Access your entire pension fund now. 
Mm, bearing in mind the tax point I just made, not sure you want to do that necessarily. Why wait till you're 55, get early access to your pension? Be very, very careful with those schemes. All right, 55 is the minimum age at which you are supposed to access your defined contribution money purchase uh, pension benefits, and that could rise in the future, so be wary of anyone saying you can get it out now. Um, one way they might offer that is via a loan. This is stuff not to fall for, by the way. This is kind of, you know, put down the phone, delete the text, forget 25%, we can get more of your money. You get the idea. People essentially implying you can bend the rules. So knowing the rules, getting proper advice, fairly essential. Now, some golden rules. All right, some, so you know, how am I going to avoid becoming the victim, one of the first victims, be all over the media and for a month to come, of the pension scammers? Number one, if something looks too good to be true, it usually is. And knowing how the current regulations work is a good defense against some of the scams I've just mentioned. A guaranteed return is probably nothing of the sort. Beware of people saying, you know, I will guarantee from now on an investment return of 8%, 8% guarantee. Well, that looks pretty high in the context of current yields, for example, and guaranteed, probably not. I'm very wary of products, services where the return uses any word like guarantee, because who knows? Stock markets can go down as well as up, past no, is no guide to the future, so on and so forth. Avoid unregulated investment opportunities. You know, do some basic homework checks. Do not go for weird sounding offshore schemes unless you know exactly how they've been put together and how the risk and return profile works. Get some advice on that. Avoid any scheme you don't understand. Simple stuff. If you don't understand how it makes these returns, then probably it doesn't actually make those returns. And don't accept calls from someone you don't know. That's a basic rule, but it's so easy to fall into the salesman's patter. You know, someone phoned you up, talks you into an exotic sounding scheme, and before you know it, you've parted with your hard earned cash. And that could come at you from a number of angles. It could be meetings, free advice, phone calls, texts, you name it. There are quite a few routes in, potentially. Now, key things to remember about this, you know, it's very tempting. Take all your money out now. It sounds too good to be true. Throw a party, buy that Ferrari, whatever it happens to be. Um, you've seen the headlines. But remember, at the end of the day, age 55, you need to be planning for a retirement period that could easily be 30 years long. You know, girls born today are estimated to be living on average to 100. So don't be too hasty. Remember, you know, remember what we're trying to achieve here. You're going to need a source of income for your whole retirement. Don't think, oh, I'll just gamble that I might not be around in five years' time. You know, make sure you've sat down and thought about the both the end of your retirement as well as the start. And at the end, of course, you know, healthcare costs and so on can start rising. You may not have the knowledge or the energy needed to manage your own investments. You know, it's all very well someone coming along and saying, do buy to let, take out you know, 25%, do buy to let. But have you done buy to let before? Do you actually know what's involved? Do you want to be managing portfolios of properties in your 80s? If someone says, you, you know, do drawdown, flexible drawdown, that's the idea that you keep your pot of money invested and you draw income off it or you flexibly access it, well fine, but that sounds as active as it is. That involves you know, a certain amount of um, knowledge and experience and risk, and that should be pointed out to you. Seek professional advice there before act, therefore before acting. And please, please don't completely write off in the way that some parts of the press would have you do the good old fashioned annuity. Yes, handing over your money to a life assurance company in return for an income stream which can be very low. I mean, £100,000 at the moment, under certain assumptions, may only buy you three to £5,000 of annual income. And that's where people tend to focus, those poor annuity rates. And I agree, that's not fabulous. But don't forget that for some people, annuities provide other benefits. I'm not, I'm not here to sell an annuity to you, but I'm just saying they do provide other benefits. Amongst them, they are simple. That's the deal. You hand your money over, from then onwards, you're not managing it, you're not worrying about investment risk. You get that income more or less guaranteed. There's no investment risk. And you, you can expect to see lifetime payments. With an annuity, you're not going to run out of money, is what I'm saying, in most cases. So, you know, there are some benefits to a product that's got a right old hammering simply because annuity rates are relatively low. That's not the full picture. And if you shop around, use your open market option, look around for the best rate. And also factor in things that can improve that rate, which I won't go into here. There is scope to get not too bad a deal, certainly not as bad as some of the headlines might have you believe. 
Okay, so final checklist. All right, as we enter this new, slightly scary world of pensions freedom, number one, check the qualifications of the person advising you. Ask, and if they won't tell you, end the conversation, I'd suggest. Check with the FCA, that's the regulator, if you're unsure about a person, a firm, or a scheme. You haven't heard of them, and you're still carrying on the conversation, at least do some basic homework checks on who they are. Are they authorised? Does the FSA know about them? And make sure the firm you deal with is an authorised firm, and you can check that relatively easily. There's a list of them. Okay, so some basic homework checks. Any questions? That was fairly brief. Do feel free to follow up on this video. Editor at killick.com.